Welcome to Taisha's Kitchen. Today I'm going to explain about Japanese seasonal festivals. So Japan holds a very long history, over 2000 years, and so we have quite a lot of different traditions. The part that you can see the most is probably the festivals. As I was growing up as a child or also as a young adult, I didn't really realize that we have so many traditions. But now that I live outside of Japan, I noticed that it's quite unique uh, that we have so many traditions still holding. And so I thought it might be interesting to show you those. A lot of these traditions go as old as a thousand years, but most of them got into the form more in the recent years, during the Edo era about 300 years ago. Yes, for Japan that's more of the recent years. And we have almost every month like one or two festivals. And like other countries, especially Western or Arabic countries, most of them have no religious backgrounds, but rather just a tradition or ritual that is passed down through the families or region. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. So the first festival we have, and it's also the most important festival in Japan, is Oshogatsu. So they start with the 1st of January and goes to 3rd of January, so the first three days of the year. This is kind of like similar to Christmas in the Western countries, where people gather around as a family. It's also considered as the holiest time of the year. And there's even a saying that how we spend these first couple days will decide how the year will go for that person. And so we try to be on the best of our behaviors. We begin the Oshogatsu with Osechi Ryori, this very special big box of kind of like bento box with different dishes inside. And most of these dishes we make and eat only in part of Osechi Ryori. All these dishes have meaning, like a shrimp, so that people live as old as they have hunched back, kazunoko or the herring eggs, so that we have a lot of children, datemaki or rolled eggs, as imitating the scroll, so that we'll be smart and studious, kobumaki or rolled kombu kelp, because the name kombu sounds similar to yorokobu, which means to be happy. So we prepare and eat these dishes so that we can spend a prosperous year. And we also drink otoso, kind of herbal alcoholic drink. And on that day we also have otoshidama, where kids receive some money from their parents or their relatives, between 10 to 100 dollar or euro worth, depending on the age. And we also have New Year's decoration like kadomatsu or shimenawa, where we decorate the house for the gods of that year. I also have a video exactly explaining about these things, so you should check that out as well. And on the 7th we have Jinjitsu, where in the morning people eat a porridge with 7 wild plants. This is kind of like a way of gaining the energy from the nature, but also soothing out the stomach where we ate a lot of things from the partying in the New Year's. And the second Monday of January we have Seijin no Hi, which is the day of coming of age. In Japan coming of age is in 20 years, so everybody who turned 20 of that year go back to their elementary school and they have a small ceremony there. A lot of people do a little some crazy thing, but I think it's also a nice experience to see their old friends from the elementary schools. And then on the 15th we have Shoshogatsu or small New Year's. This is usually moved to a Saturday or Sunday depending on the region where people bring their New Year's decoration and make a bonfire called Dondoyaki. And there people often serve also like dango and uh, we grill the dango there on the fire and it's also just a nice get together after New Year's. And on the February 3rd we have Setsubun. And there we do mamemaki, meaning throwing the beans, where we say oniwa soto and fukuwa uchi, meaning demons out and happiness in. And within the families we do the same tradition, uh, where usually the father dress up like a demon with a demon mask, he's gonna try to scare the kids and the kid's gonna throw the beans at him and then he runs away and he comes back with another mask of fuku no kami, or happiness god, happiness spirit, and then bring the happiness to the house. And then we eat the beans for the amount of the age, and depending on the region, some people eat a homaki, a really thick sushi roll, facing the direction of the happiness of that ear. By the way, often in the Western countries, demons are characterized as like pure evil. But in Japan, demons are not pure evil, but instead they were originally humans who had difficult life and had grudge against the humanity. This is very clearly depicted in the new anime of Kimetsu no Yaiba, or the Demon Slayer. If you haven't seen it, I really highly recommend it. And the background of all the demons are also explained as having difficult lives. And then because of that, they turn to demons. And it's also a little different connotation of demon in Japanese and other cultures. And then on February 8th, we have Harikuyo. Our family didn't do anything at home, uh, but my grandmother did. I think this is a tradition that's kind of starting to die out a little more because most of us don't do any needle work anymore. But it's a tradition to soothe out the pain of the needles so that they stick in the needles on something very soft like tofu or konyaku and then thank the needles working for us. And then on the 3rd of March, we have Hinamatsuri or the Girls' Day. I explained a little bit on this video of Chirashi Zushi. Uh, it's a day where the families decorate their house with so-called Hina Ningyo with Ohina-sama and Odairi-sama. There's even emoji for that. Or sometimes with a Hina-dan, a big set of decoration with the two pair and their servants. These are the emperor and the empress. 
On this day, we eat traditionally often chirashi sushi, and also there are some snack according to this, hinarare or hishimochi. Around the end of March to beginning of April, we have ohanami. So this is not like a really set festival, but it's something we do to celebrate the spring. So it's more like a picnicking event that people just go to see the flowers or cherry blossoms. This is a more new tradition. This only has a history of uh, 300 years or so. Originally, supposedly, this was actually with plum trees, but someone made this special breed of Somei Yoshino, where all the flowers just first bloom without any leaves. And so it's quite very beautiful, and people went out to see these cherry blossoms. We even have it in the weather forecast when each region will have full bloom of each cherry blossom trees. And so for us, it's a very big event where we just go out picnicking and join the flowers. And then on April 8th, or sometimes depending on region, May 8th, we have Hanamatsuri. This is the equivalent of Christmas. This is one of the two only Buddhist festivals where people celebrate the birth of Buddha. This is also very different in regions. In many regions, the temples present so-called Tanjo Butsu, or the baby Buddha, equivalent of the cribs of the Jesus in the Christmas. People present different servings, mostly snacks because it's a baby. Some pour sweet tea over the Buddha. And some regions have so-called chigo gyoretsu, where the small kids would dress up in the traditional kimono of Heian Jidai, and they serve snacks to the people who come to watch them. And then on the May 5th, Kodomo no Hi, or Tango no Sekku. Like the girls in March, this is the boys' day. And then instead of the dolls, we have samurai helmet or samurai armor, and often in the garden we have koi no bori. This is also depicted in emoji. So this comes from a myth of koi carp swimming up the waterfall to become a dragon. And this is why Magi Carp and Pokemon will evolve to Garanos and its dragon. On this day, we have Chimaki, mochi wrapped in bamboo leaves. And we also often decorate this with a flower of Shobu because the leaves look like a sword of a samurai. And on the evening, we take a bath and we put the Shobu leaves in the bath because it has a very soothing, strong scent. Supposedly, it will give the power so that the children will be stronger to live. And in June, we don't have any festivals or celebrations. And probably because in Japan, June is a rainy season. And depending on the year, at least half of the June will be rainy days. So people didn't want to have any festival in that time. And then on July 7th, we have Tanabata. So originally, this was a festival for weaving. This comes from a Chinese myth of Orihime and Hikoboshi, presented by Altaya of Aquila and Vega of Lyra. And they're separated by the so-called Amanogawa in English, Milky Way, but in Japan, we call it as a Heaven's River. Two lovers, but they're only allowed to meet once a year. And so Tanabata, they're allowed to meet. And on this day, we decorate a bamboo, and we also hang some wishes. People usually write goals or what they want to achieve, that we want to be studious or diligent. And some regions eat somen as a dish for this day, because the somen noodle kind of looks like a Amanogawa or this Heaven's River. And then around the end of July to the beginning of August, we have doyo. This is the hottest time of the year, and people don't have energy to work. It's so hot. And then some people suggested start eating unagi. It started actually as a merchandise for the unagi restaurants, but that's something we do nowadays because unagi supposedly have a lot of nutrients and will make your body strong to withstand this heat. And then between August 13th to 15th, we have the second most important holiday in Japan, obon. And this is also the second of the only Buddhist festival where people believe that our ancestors will come back from heaven to our earth and make a visit. And we have so-called mukaibi, a small fire that we burn in front of our house so that our ancestors know where we are. And then on the side we have shoryoma, horse made of cucumber, a cow made of eggplant. These are the rides for the ancestors, horse for coming in so that they come as fast as possible to earth, cow for going back and as slow back to heaven as possible. In modern days, people got creative with making these shoryoma, like these or like these. I think these are very funny and humorous, but of course, usually we have these to present at the Buddhist altar. And depending on how religious you are, we invite our Buddhist monks to our house and chant for our ancestors. And also, because our ancestors are back, we also celebrate with them. And this is the time we have this big festival, of Omatsuri, where in the center there's usually a yagura, and around them we do a so-called bon odori, which is a dance of bon. And we also make a big fireworks in this season. And so for us, Japanese fireworks is a summer thing, and you never ever barely see fireworks in the winter. And then this omatsu, we have a lot of vendors. It's a really fun time to experience uh, if you're planning to visit Japan someday. And on the night of 15th, we have so-called okuribi, where we send off our ancestors back to heaven with a small fire. And then in September, we have otsukimi. There's not a set date for this, but it's usually a first full moon of the September. And there's no really a festival for this, but it's just more a ritual thing where we spend the night very quietly. This is a time where we enjoy the quietness or the loneliness, or even the melancholic feeling of that season and we enjoy the sound of the crickets. For us Japanese, the sound of the cricket is very soothing and very quiet thing, but I've heard that for the Westerners, this is a noise. So I don't know how you feel about that. 
And depending on different cultures, people see different things on the surface of the moon. In some cultures, they see a crab, a woman reading a book, a crocodile, or a lion. But in Japanese culture, we see a rabbit pounding on mochi. And so we have as a serving a mochi dango. And this is also why the character of Sailor Moon is Tsuki no Usagi, because Usagi is Japanese for rabbit. And then you have Chibi Usa, which means a mini rabbit. And in October, we don't have any festivals. And my assumption is that that's the busiest time of the year because it's the harvesting season for the rice. And Japan is a primary rice country, so people are too busy for any celebrations. And then on November 15, we have Shichigo san. This is also often moved to the next Saturday or Sunday. Shichigo san means 357, and this is the day where the families celebrate the children reaching these age. Three for boys and girls, five for the girls, and seven for the boys. And the family dress up and go to the shrine and thank the gods for being able to reach this age and uh, wish that they'll be able to live further. Because in Japan, in the history, children death was a very common thing. So it wasn't a given thing that people reach 357 years of age. But for us now, it's just a day to get dressed up. Sometimes there are some vendors on the shrine and kids get these so-called chitose ame, meaning thousand years candies. These are long candies wishing for the long lives. Often they're in a pair, one with a crane and one with a turtle, because in Japanese myth, cranes are supposed to live thousand years and turtles 10,000 years. And on November 23rd, we have Niname Sai. So this is not really a festival for us, but it's a day our emperor does a ritual of this Niname Sai. And this is exactly the Japanese version of a Thanksgiving, where we thank the God for all the harvest that we are able to receive this year. And the emperor present the crops that he himself actually planted, grown and harvested himself. I think in other cultures, it is quite unimaginable to have their kings or emperors grow their own food. But Japanese emperor is a representative of us common people. And so he has his own garden. He present the gods of the harvest of himself. And people who are very conservative wait until this day to start eating the new harvest of the rice of that year because the emperors and the royal family also wait until this day to eat the rice of that year. And then on the December 22nd, we have Toji or the winter solstice. Uh, somehow we don't do anything on the summer solstice. There isn't really a celebration for this, but it's just a ritual thing that we eat at home. We eat things that has the noun of un, because the word un means luck in Japanese. And so it's just a word play, word pun. Try to have the luck inside us. So like ninjin, renkon, ginnan, kinkan, kanten, udon. And in the evening when we take a bath, on the baths we put in the yuzu peels. I just have a really nice scent and it's just a really nice thing. I really enjoy this as a child. And supposedly the oil on the yuzu peel have a relaxing effect but also to prevent the skin from drying. So if you can get hold of yuzu then I suggest give it a try. And on the last days of the December we have omisoka. There's also really no festival for this, but this is a day where we thank the gods of each buildings. Because in our Japanese tradition, we thought that the gods or the spirits were everywhere, and also each house has their own god or spirit. So we thank them, and as a thanks, we do so-called osoji, or the big cleaning, and we clean the house. And this is also something we do in our schools. Um, so the last day of school, uh, we do a big cleaning of the whole school, and we do this also in the companies. For the Western culture, it's probably unimaginable that you clean your own the company that you work in. But in Japan, uh, that's also a ritual to thank the company building. Uh, we clean the whole building with all the co-workers. I think it just also has a nice bonding effect within the co-workers and not just work for the business. And then on that evening of the last day of the year, we eat Toshikoshi Soba. Just a plain soba noodle to thank that we have lived so long. And right before the year turns, we have so-called Joya no Kane. Each temple usually have a big bell and they hit this bell 108 times. For all the evil desire and evil thoughts. Because in the Buddhist philosophy, it is thought that mankind have 108 evil thoughts and evil desires. And so the temples hit 108 times to wash out these 108 evil thoughts so that we can come into the new year with a clean slate. And you can also see part of this in this video. So if you're interested, you can watch that as well. So that's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching this and hope you learned something new in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, I'd love it if you get the like button for me. Or if you have any questions regarding any of these festivals, or if you have any requests what I should talk about in these presentational videos, or if you have any feedbacks, please feel free to write anything in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.